final song, song six, which is an interesting title, Incense and Myrrh. And this is definitely the, m the most mellow, I guess, of, sure. the, of the thing. And obviously, like we've been discussing all along here, this record was written in order of, of the actual order of the record. So yeah. I guess it makes sense that we're going to kind of round everything up with something a little bit different, a little bit mellow, if you've been you know, punished for almost 50 <laughs> minutes of <laughs> crushing progressive metal. Right. So people can kind of go, well, oh, I can breathe for a, a couple seconds. I think it's a nice was closer. It, was, yeah, was that, I mean, was that, is that accurate, or are you just like, um, this is just what actually, you came up with? It, no, it's a little different with this one. Actually, Any Given Day was supposed to be the last song. Any Given Day has a subtitle of us. Uh, Strangers Like Me. And that was the end of the record as far as I was concerned. <laughs> and John had more to say and he had some ideas he was working on musically. And he really pushed me. I want to get this I want to get this out of me. Yeah. And so I felt the album was a little short, but that was just my opinion. And, and yeah, so also I had more to say too. So Incense of Murr was probably ninety percent John's. He had some you know, he had some guitar parts for it and he wanted to put it on there. So I worked on it and came Came off the yeah, I'm, well, now, I'm glad the final you did. Arrangement. I'm glad you, you did because I really enjoyed that song. And I, I, you know, I love it now. I think it's a perfect coda to the whole thing. It fits, fits well with any given day. It was actually, any given day was supposed to be the last song, and then we did Incense and Murr, and that was going to be one long song, like another 15 minute song. And then we decided at the last minute, I think during mastering, that we should split it off and make it a separate song. So does that mean lyrically those two songs tie together then? Oh yeah. Okay, so very much so. So, so basically, Incense and Murr is kind of the, the second. Uh, it's uh, the ongoing thing of, of any given day. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yes. And what is, I mean, I know what Incense is, but what is Murr? Incense and Murr is the. Uh, I live in California. It's, it's we don't a, have Murr out here. Aren't they some of the the gifts, incense and myrrh, yeah. and frankincense and all that? They were gifts for. It's it's burned as a you know. It's so, what I'm doing here is actually, uh, it's duplicating a, a funeral service. You know, looking down upon yourself. You know, uh, silken red mahogany, uh, beautifully disfigured. There's a lot of terminology used in here, where you know it's indicative of like looking over a body. But what it essentially boils down to is a the death of your inner child which makes life unbearable. Now, you know, as a, as a lyricist, you know, you, you especially, I think, I mean, you know, we used to back, way back in the day with Fred Tony, so like sit down and go, story time, tell me the stories. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. You, know, you paint <laughs> these amazing pictures in all your lyrics, whether it's the early stuff or the stuff now. Um, like, well, how, does that how does that come out of you? Like, it, it, you, I, did you ever do a lot of creative writing or, any, or anything like that? Because, you know, you, like I said, you're painting these very interesting pictures with a lot of mm. sort of difficult dialogue to, to read into. It's not, it's not easy. It's not like just, you know, any guy down the street can kind of write this sort of poetry. You know, and I don't know. It's uh, sometimes, uh, <laughs> well, you know what? It's um, in interpreting some, some of Jim's, you know, uh, musical arrangements, you know, they, they evoke emotion, you know, and certain things in songs evoke emotion. Um, I just think if I can sit, I can get as dark as you want. <laughs> it's, if I sit in a quiet area and get my thoughts get racing, I start thinking too much, you know, I can come up with a lot of, but there's things. no formal training, like you didn't have a lot of, you know, yeah. you didn't get A straight A's in English in school or anything like I that? I did pretty good in English, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you have to <laughs> good in English. Yeah. Do you have to when you're writing these lyrics? Do you, do you, do you like look through so, you know sources or anything like that to come up with? Oh, words absolutely. Yeah, I know what I want to say, and I and I color things up, and yeah, there's a certain way I want it to be. So I do absolutely look. I look for the right words sometimes. It does, you know the words aren't working, and I rearrange. But when I do finally. Yeah, probably just like you know, in poetry, you find the way you want to say something, and it resonates with you. You know, it's like okay, good, leave that alone. I like that. You know. So now this this whole record, there's a somewhat of a common theme, as we mentioned, aside from from understanding less guys. Did did you tell the whole story that you wanted to tell on this, or is there more? I mean, obviously, there's going to be more records, so I, I guess there it, needs I, to be more. I think right? it's never ending. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, that's what we like to hear. Right. Well, that's all six songs on the Arch Matheos record, Sympathetic Resonance. Did I say it right? Finally, yeah. I think I've yeah. finally been beaten into my head about it. Say bye Thanks for uh, like 10 times real fast. No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out and uh, going you. over everything. The uh, record's out. It's phenomenal, amazing. I really appreciate you guys uh, telling us the story of kind of how everything came about. Thank and, you. Uh, okay. There you go.